The Todd Shapiro Show. Canada Laughs, Sirius XM 168. You, you guys basically want to debunk what smart contracts are and let people know truly what they are. Uh, and, and I guess, you know, sometimes people always ask, like, is, is a smart contract just the same as an actual, which we're used to, Gilbert, in the entertainment industry or what most people would be in their jobs when they sign just like a, a typical normal contractual agreement? Yeah. Is there, are there contingencies in place based on raising the capital? Sorry about the words, Todd. <laughs> Yeah. So, I mean, if we talk about like the mobile mobile application and stuff like that, that's exactly right. You'll have like a minimum threshold that needs to be attained. All the cryptocurrency and stuff will go into into a smart contract, which will have like rules and governance around that. And let's just say that the um, the funding goal isn't obtained um, or the or the movie doesn't meet any of these thresholds, then the funds do get returned back. But uh, I mean, that's just one small use case for smart contracts. Oh, Lisa, you want to talk a little bit more about smart contracts? Yeah, um, if you think about like, you know, Bitcoin was the first kind of introduction to for many people into the space, and then blockchain was all over the news in the last couple of years about how, you know, Microsoft, IBM are going to use blockchain to do this or that. Smart contracts are really the evolution of all of these technologies to integrate any traditional system with blockchain itself. And that's what we'll really start to see come into the forefront over the next year, just how a smart contract can be used and how we can see blockchain being integrated with these traditional industries. So are they legally enforceable then? That's the idea. That's the next step. So, you know, a contract is basically just a set of information and, and rules that go along for whether it's enforceable or not. And if, if X happens and, you know, Z happens and so on and so forth, well, a smart contract can digitally enforce those rules and execute without uh, human interaction. So it's, it's adding instructions to all the information. Yeah, like a good example is like a divorce settlement and you have to pay like child support. <laughs> you could put like a divorce settlement in a smart contract and have the child support payments part of that. So it combines both the legal and the financial aspect. Uh, into this one uh, document on the blockchain, whereas traditionally you have like finance, like payments separate from legal, and then you have to go chase like the baby daddy to make sure he pays. Like, this removes that ambiguity. It could be baby mama. The baby mama could be the rich one in the family, Lisa. We don't need to get sexist here. <laughs> no, like, <laughs> yeah. um, and are, like, are there are there any like at, at this early stages, and are there limited applications? limited applications to to a smart contract yeah I mean, to be honest we're still in such early days like there's there's a lot of industries trying to break into blockchain or smart contract technology that just aren't ready for it um you know a big one where smart contract technology is going to be massive uh, and in place but it's just really hard to get there is supply chain and everybody's talking about supply chain for smart contracts and blockchain and it's an amazing use case but it's really hard to take these traditional industries and kind of put them in this framework at a large scale right now. Can we ever get a smart contract for people you vote into office that have all these province uh, promises during campaign campaigning and that you have to hold them accountable to those campaign promises that they have to do them? If not, you're allowed to like get a hook and remove them from office. Is that, is that, can we, can we get something like that in a place for our politicians? Well, we can definitely do it. Now, I don't know if they're going to, they're gonna gonna abide by that, but yeah, 100%. A smart contract can can have uh, criteria and milestone based uh, based enforcement. Um, it, we, that's that's not actually hard at all. Uh, well, it's good to know. I, I mean, I love learning about this stuff. And, and also over at uh, vanbex.com, you guys have written a blog recently on dedicated to sort of these smart contracts and stuff. And and, and you can just go and find it there, right? Hundred percent. Yeah, you put everything on vanbex.com for sure. You guys got to check out. And I'd love some feedback on the new page, just one page that we put up about mobile. It's mogulfund.io. Check it out. We're looking for feedback. Mobile, mogulfund.io? Mogul. Yeah, mogul, M-O-G-U-L-F-U-N-D.io. All right, man, I'm going there right now. Check that out. Uh, listeners, you got to go make sure you check that out.
Um, that's that's. Uh, I mean, I just think what I love about that is you're 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 helping creators, and you're also you know potentially getting some great investors into good projects. And I think if people have passion projects and fall in love with stuff and, and put money into things, that I think it, it essentially through this through this great idea of yours will work in the favor of, of audiences because it will create more genuine movies. Like none of this, you know, like it'll you know it will we'll create great movies because of it. We're making movies great again. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> uh, uh, funny, we talked about passion projects today. Actually, you know, that was one of the big things that we brought up. And how do we, how do we even empower passion projects even more? So you get a great director, a great actor, and a great script together, and they want to, they want to basically put a. Um, put a lot of their efforts into it and not make it cost a lot of money. How do we do that? That's actually going to be part of the white paper. Dude, I told you I should be on the advisory committee already. I ain't just talking out of my ass. <laughs> do you have all the scripts you're looking for right now, or are you looking to get more content? Uh, we're definitely looking for more content. We have two possible scripts right now. One's already got a strong recommend from the studios, um, but we're definitely looking for more scripts. Um, I'd like I'd, I'd love to get them as early as possible. It's still pretty early. I think in the next couple of weeks we'll be more inclined to take that. Right now we're we're looking to get people attached who can help us learn more about the movie industry. So the people who are going to be able to pick the scripts that uh, that are going to be put up for voting and for funding and you know production companies and we're talking to uh, actors and distribution uh, companies and things like that right now. So we're, we're putting the, the team together, and it's, it's looking really good. So if you've got some suggestions on that. Well, hey, we got a script writer here. I'm just <laughs> thinking of my own screenplays right now. I'm being, I'm being pretty damn selfish about it. I have another question. I've got follow-up questions. Where do you guys stand on creating original streaming series? Because there's a lot of movies out there, but streaming series seems like the... The thing that people are doing now, are you going to create original st streaming series as well? Well, I got to tell you, so a streaming series, I think that's going to be on the storytellers that are going to write that. But phase two of Mogul is a DRM, a digital rights management system, almost like a Netflix model where the owners of the, the stories that they create can put uh, and distribute their content. And they're the ones that can give or take away permission based on cost or time or whatever they want to do. It's all based on the blockchain where their content is completely safe from being stolen. Wow, that's brilliant. That's great. Yeah. We're, 30, we're, th we're about 30% of the way to building that model. Like, we're not there yet, but we're close. Well, if you need is anyone on the advisory committee for the other 70%, I'm just saying, Lisa and Kev. <laughs> Uh, no. Todd, Todd, you got to be ahead of the game with the advice. Not the advice we're already hearing. Come on. <laughs> well, I got to reserve it until I get the signed document and the smart contract that I'm a part of the team. What then genre? you get it. Then you get my 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 my, my brilliant mind. <laughs> no. I'm Do you joking. have a genre in mind that you want to start with? Do you want to open on a horror movie, on a rom com? <laughs> what are you? What do you think you're gonna open with? Because you got a dramedy. <laughs> Yeah, what are the thing? What where are you leaning? I have no idea, but you know what? You can you can pitch them all, and we can see which ones which ones get voted in by the by the global community. And I'll oh. use those big words. You know? <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I'm finally following along. <laughs> well, I learned what global meant. Um, uh, I, I love the innovation. I, I love the innovation uh, that you do at Van Bex. I think it's I think it's brilliant. I really, you know, I think you know we we laugh. Obviously, we're a comedy show at the end of the day, but. If, if people, you know, really think about what, what you, you are proposing and building and, and you can go to mogulfund.io and check it out. I mean, this is really everything that people want. And, and when I say that, I mean that pure, like on a, on a very genuine level, people like to invest and people are always fearful, whether it's charity. And I know that's something you're strongly uh, for in terms of working on the blockchain on charity to make sure that those funds go to where they say they're going, to movies, mm -hmm. to passion projects. People don't want to get... Essentially, I was going to say a terrible word. They don't want to have their 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 money uh, ripped away from them for something that they believed in. And now this is going to be a way for people to get involved in projects and truly know that the money you give is the money that that will be put to places that you thought in the first place you were giving it for. And now you'll be proven that it is. And I think that's stuff that needs to change the world because really what's sad is a lot of us have bought ideas in the past, man. We bought a lot of fairy dust and we really believed and you start to doubt your own abilities at that point going, man, how was I taken by a, by a, 
by what do they call them? The snake? Uh, what do they call them? The, the snake oil uh, salesman. Snake oil salesman. Yeah. And and you get afraid. And 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 what you guys are doing is showing people that that won't happen anymore. And I and I really truly love that. Uh, I think it's brilliant. And I think you're helping. You're helping all these. You know, you're helping the economy essentially. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I mean, I mean, guys like like Elise and myself, we've always really promoted kind of transparency and fairness. And even with the funding mechanisms that blockchain gives you, like we love the fact it levels the playing field. Like not only do you get the opportunity if you got $10 million in your bank and you're some fat cat to invest in these new creative ideas. But you know what? Now, if you're someone who's got 10 bucks or a hundred bucks or something, you have the same opportunity. Now the scale is different, but it, the technology allows you to have the same opportunity as everybody else. And that is a fair marketplace. Ah, beautiful to hear my man. And, uh, and my lady, <laughs> I don't know what he said at that point. <laughs> um, hey, we, uh, as, as, as you know, the Shapiro uh, listeners love, love what Van Bex has done. They, they've given us a, a, already one massive giveaway for the opening night, the Leafs. I know that Kevin, you've already said throughout the season of Leafs and Raptors and concerts coming to town that you'll probably give up. Uh, you know, there'll be many opportunities to win, to win four great suite tickets, uh, of your, of your special suite over at the Scotiabank, the, uh, Arena. what do they call it? The uh, Scotiabank Arena. Arena. And, and it's, uh, you guys are so supportive of everything we do we're obviously very supportive of everything you do um and we can't wait to see you in toronto do we have an opportunity to see you face to face next week kevin studio next week i will be in the studio with you guys yes and, and lisa good luck uh not that you need it you're such a great presenter when you get on the panel in the smart cities of vancouver event um we really appreciate both of you being on air today um and uh and and on a personal note thanks dude you gave me phil collins tickets for tonight's show and I'm, no. and I'm bringing my mom no. Yeah. You lucky! Oh my god! <laughs> I know, dude. I'd rather go to Phil Collins than my show. Uh, yuck, yucks. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but, but but Todd, remember, you got you only got three tickets to give out because you got to be the wonderful host when we give these tickets out. Dude, I will be a great host to anyone who wants for any of these great events, courtesy of Van Bex. I will go to his, the Scotiabank Arena as much as possible. We'll even bring Bilal once in a while. Yeah, so two that. tickets. <laughs> All right, we, we just don't want to spoil the out too much, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't agree more. Uh, thank you, guys. Really appreciate all, all your help and all your advice. And uh, people should check out mogofund.io. Thank you again. The Todd Shapiro Show. You are the greatest hero in American history. Sirius XM, Canada Laughs. Channel 168. 